Hi everyone, I'm Louis Silverstein from Dronebox Labs or dronebox.com. Uh, so today what we're going to be doing is unboxing and setting up the HTC Vive. I just received this and have no prior knowledge of how to set it up. Uh, the only thing we've done is opened it up to see what kind of mounting equipment we would need to set up the system here in our stage. Uh, besides that, we've only downloaded the Stream VR software so we can get everything going right away. Um, so sit back and let's try and figure out how to make this thing work. So first thing we're going to do is uh, take the box and open it up and see what's inside. So let's take this and just put it here for now. So we got that. All right, so the first thing we have here is uh, some instructions on the area in which you will be setting up your HTC Vive. We have uh, what is in the box. It's a little bit bright, sorry about that. Uh, we'll be showing this on an insert. We have what's in the box. So the first thing we have here in this compartment is we have our lighthouse sensors. I don't know if you can see those. So these are our lighthouse sensors. We're mounting those on these tripods. And then we have our controllers. Let's take one of those out and take a look at it. So here's the controller. So let's take that and put that back. This will be a lot of fun. Other things that I have here um, with me to set this up is a power strip and some extension cords because I'm not quite sure what we're going to need in order to power this thing. So we then, in another compartment, we have our head unit. This thing looks pretty awesome. Put that back in here. Oh, what did it come with? Uh, there's a cleaner for the lenses. All right. Don't think there's anything else in that compartment, but let's open up and check. No, nothing else in there, so I'm gonna leave that in there for now. I'm gonna take this packaging. Here. Okay. All right. So underneath of our our lighthouses, we have some mounting gear, and we have some instructions on how to mount that. So when you open up your box, you'll see that there are mounting instructions for how to mount this on your wall. You're going to want it to be up to five meters away from each other, which is 16 feet, and you're going to want it to have about a 120 degree view of the area in which you're looking at. Um, so, let's continue seeing what else is in here before we start actually setting up any of this system. So we have what looks like an AC unit for our lighthouses. Here's one of them. There's a second one. Here is a sink cord for the lighthouses. I think this is, an, I believe this is optional. In the other component underneath of the controllers, we have another small box here that has more information, actually more information, more objects in it. Um, we'll go through those one by one. Looks like a charger of some sort. Two of those, I believe these are probably the power stations for the controllers. And these are USB to USB. So I believe these are also the wires you'd be using to charge your controller units. I can actually verify this by looking at our instructions. Let's see what the official terms are for these things. So we have our two base stations, which are the lighthouses, the sink cable, which it does say is optional in instructions. We have two base station power supplies, which we had. We have the mounting kit, which we went over. Uh, the link box, what is a link box? Well, we have this last section here. It does say link box on it. Can't read it, but it does say it. Let's open that up. And there are some more goodies inside of here. 
we have what I believe is our link box. It does say link box on it. Put that over here as well behind our podium. We have what looks like a, a narrow face visor cover. We have our power supply unit for that as well. Do we have two warranty manuals or guides? Another, this is an HDMI cable and a USB cable. Oh, and one last thing, which looks like I'm gonna say earbuds. Yep, earbuds. Okay, so HDMI cable, USB cable, earbuds, alternative face cushion, cleaning cloth, documentation, headset, controllers, and micro USB chargers, two of them. We have everything we need here to start setting up our Vive. So let's see what this starts to say with uh, setting up your play area. So plan a play area, room scale. Five meters maximum. Download the HTC Vive setup. Set up VR. That's step three. So, what I'm going to do now is first mount using the base station mounting guide. I'm going to mount those two base stations to our tripods here. And then from there, we'll start our software up and see how this all works. So just make sure to keep everything organized so you know what goes with everything because there are quite a few things here that uh, could get confusing. And I already feel like I put something in the wrong area. Okay. That does, of course, the base station. Put that back in here. Okay. So, we're going to take our mounters, or our mounting equipment here. And it says, well, most people at home will be doing this. You'll be installing these onto your wall in your home. But here in our studio, or laboratory, we're going to be putting them onto tripods so that we can move them around, use them on our green screen, which is behind me, or use them in other areas of the studio, laboratory. So, it wants us to adjust everything onto these. And... So let's take our first unit here. Let's tighten it onto here. Okay, that's good. Let's take our first and take our first station here. Okay, good. Well, these have covers on them to start. So we're gonna install it like so. Make sure your threading is all lined up and you're not doing anything wrong. So you turn it until you feel resistance. And there's a wing nut on the back you can use to tighten everything up. So that's nice and tight. We're gonna, we're gonna see if this works because I've never done this before. And you see how this is idiot proof or user friendly or what the word is you would use. I'm assuming it's going to work right off the bat. So right now I'm putting on the second one here. And if you're watching this on dronebox.com, good for you. I'm glad you're watching on our site. Uh, if you're watching this on another website, please go to dronebox.com. Again, that's drome, D-R-O-M-E boxbox dot com, and you can find a whole bunch of exclusive content that we've been producing here in our laboratory. 
We do everything from cooking to comedy to music. Uh, we are broadcasting live nine hours a day, five days a week. And we've been doing this since the first of the year of 2015. So we've been on the air for one year, four months, and 23 days um, minus weekends. Uh, so, okay, so we have our two tracking stations here set up and then it wants us to power them. So the first, before I do that, I'm gonna log on to the HTC uh, Stream VR software. You can see it behind me. And we're gonna get that launching. All right, so the first thing it says is headset not detected. Make sure your headset is connected properly, then reboot by clicking below. Uh, Stream VR not ready. Base station not detected, headset not connected. All right, so my instructions here, they have me setting up power cable to this thing and this here. Oh, well, oh, we, we did not go to hec5.com slash setup. Let us do that. So let's see what this says. It says download Vive setup. All right, we're downloading that. That's it's going to take two minutes. So as we do that, let us uh, let's figure out. Let's open up some of these things. Let's, let's open up our lens cleaner. Put our lens cleaner over here. So we have this out. It's nice. All right, what else do we need? Oh, we have our headset. This is pretty cool. Uh, I'm gonna get our assistant. She's gonna help me with the headset. Ah, all right, so you ready to help me with this? Cool. All right, hey everybody, so this is my lovely assistant. This is Sarah. Say hello, Sarah. All right, so Sarah is going to be helping us with uh, setting up this headset. You wanna wear this? Okay, cool. So we're gonna put this on my lovely assistant over here. At least just to, just to hold it to start. She's not really wearing it fully, but let's Let's see what wires we got over here. Looks like we have a, a sound cable of some sort. We've got power, HDMI, and USB. Oh, and this is falling off of her head. Don't want that. It's a brand new thing. Don't want it to come loose and fall and break. So let's loosen up the headset a little bit so we can actually fit it over her fake hair. All right. There we go. She's looking stylish. <laughs> All right, so that is downloading. This is still falling off of her head, but what do our wires say? It says connect to link box. That's a USB. And that's connect to link box HDMI. All right, so stay, don't, don't fall off. All right, so Vive setup. Running the executable. Windows is asking if I want to do that. And here we go. Where did it go? Oh, we're doing something here. We have a little pinwheel and all right, Vive set up. Here we go. Get started. 
for best experience. It wants me to upload or change my my graphics card drivers. We're going to ignore that for now. Uh, we have a disclaimer here. More, 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 more. Probably should read that. I'll have my lawyer look at that. Okay. So zero, get ready, three minutes. Install software, 10 minutes. Set up hardware, 10 minutes. Complete setup in five minutes. Okay. So it says it's gonna take about 28 minutes. Get ready to entertain an immersive virtual world with Vive. You see into virtual reality using the headset and you interact with virtual objects using the controllers. Base stations help your headset and controllers track their exact location in the room. Walk, crawl, jump around, Every move you make in real life also moves in VR. Cool, all right, so it says we have 20 minutes till we're done. Okay, so wants us to find our room and the room we're gonna use is going to be five meters, which is 16 feet in diagonal. Uh, that means I'm gonna quickly go grab a tape measure so we can get exactly 16 feet in diameter. I'm still with you here. I'm just walking into the control room now uh, to grab a tape measure so we can see if we can make this thing optimal. I'm also going to try not to moon any of you uh, when I'm bending over. Uh, my pants should be on well, but we'll see. Okay, so I have a tape measure. Let us measure out 16 feet corner to corner. I have a feeling this is going to be a lot of fun. Oh man, yeah, this is going to be... All right, so... Unfortunately, my tape measure is kind of glitchy here and doesn't want to stay. Ah! All right, so that happened. So I'm gonna grab a sandbag. It's gonna help us out. Oh, let's get this back out here. For those of you at home can't tell, but I'm actually on a, is that a 30 foot long, 30 foot, 40 foot wide, by 20 foot deep, by 20 foot tall green screen. So here is our diagonals. All right, so we're gonna take our first base station and move it out to here. Let's uh, also set up these legs so we don't accidentally hit anything. So there's our first station, and let's take our second station and we're gonna place it right over our tape measure. So this is nice 16 feet. Oh, and it fits perfectly on our screen, which is very, very lucky. All right, so we have that all set up. Now let's see what the next step is. Okay, make sure there's power outlets close. You may need tools to set up. Well, oh, it looks like we, we missed some things, but uh, I think we're okay, because it just wants us to power them, plug things in. That's why I have my extension cords. So we're gonna run one extension cord all the way out to that far one, and then we're gonna run another extension cord to the close one. But first we're gonna take our handy dandy surge protector and make sure that nothing gets surged in the process. Because don't want to have this expensive piece of equipment accidentally surged by some power and fry in some important components. Um, and most importantly, if you are going to be running a setup where you need to have extension cords, make sure to run them around the edge of your volume because you don't want to, you know, trip over an extension cord while you're in the virtual space. That would really, really ruin the experience. 
So I'm gonna run this cable all the way around, way beyond the perimeter of where we'd be going to use this device. And we'll take our second cable and run it to our close base station. We're gonna see if at the end of all this it takes 28 minutes or what it takes. Looks like uh, while we're doing this, we can download some of this software. All right. And here goes our second device. And it is downloading quite the package. With that being done, I'm going to take the liberty and plug in these base stations. So we have our first charger unit here. We're gonna take this. I really am curious also if we can get further away than the five meters if we have a nice open area because I would really like to be able to use this entire green screen volume for virtual reality. At the end of the program, I'll make sure to turn off the uh, composition layer so you can actually see the green screen that I'm on and uh, get an idea of what the space looks like. And again, if you haven't been to dronebox.com, I highly recommend it. We're doing a bunch of fun things with different technologies. We're working on a virtual environment system for our cameras to live track. So no more Wayne's World effect. Um, there's only a few companies out there doing previs to this level and we're hoping to actually bring production to this level. To the level of uh, live environments with virtual reality and virtual sets and all that type of stuff. So this is gonna be a fun experiment from dronebox.com to start to implement virtual reality with the HTC Vive and really create new content people haven't seen before. Oh, it looks like something's going on our screen over there. Well, that's, that's cool. Let's see. Let's try and multitask here. All right, we can sign up with our stream, our Steam account. Let's uh, I'll move this a little bit out of the way so people at home actually can't see what I'm doing. Cool. And the question is, what is my password? Uh, Uh, maybe I have this too. Let's see. Hmm. Ah, we just got an email. So, I am going to temporarily pause my background because I need to access some things that are not publicly consumable. So, let's see what happens if I do that. Okay. Here we go. It says that they just sent me an email and I have a verification code that I need to use. Aha. Uh -huh. I will say this is quite the secure system.
All right, and we are back. Well, it's still downloading quite a bit. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what I just authorized, but we will find out. All right, so the next thing we're going to hook up is this second power unit over here on this module. I'm also thinking that we're probably going to be putting these things up into the air a little bit because the images show that it has to be above your head in order for this to really work. Oh, and I heard that one start spinning up. That's cool. Oh, I see, I see a blue light and it says six on it. I'm gonna take off this protective film. As much as I wanna leave that on there, I'm gonna keep it there just in case I wanna put it back on. Oh, and this one's on too. This is cool. All right, and I don't see a number in this one, but it's on, it's got a green light. All right. So we're just going to continue downloading some software here. Um, in the meantime, I think I might start charging our controller units. It looks like you need a, at least a power strip to really get this thing off the ground. Because I count one, two, which are the wall units, three and four, which are the controller units and probably five, five outlets you're gonna need for this entire endeavor, because we have the, uh, this, what is this called again? The link box, which is also gonna need some power. This really is not something for the, the consumer that just wants to plug and play. This is definitely an experience, but I guess that makes sense because it is virtual reality and it's gonna be an experience. And ahead of time, we download some, some different programs to, to play with it, utilize with it. So we have uh, Google's um, Tilt Brush that we're going to be trying out. And we also have the Job Simulator. Um, correction, we don't have Job Simulator. Didn't sound, didn't, did not download that. We have Fantastic Contraption, which uh, is a bundled game that comes with it when you ordered it pre-order and uh i did buy the gallery episode one uh, that looked like a lot of fun um, so we'll see uh, we also here at dronebox labs have been developing um, a plug-in to uh, merge the vive with maya um, that is a work in progress right now we have a proprietary plug in with our motion capture cameras um, with Maya and we are porting that over to hopefully be using the Vive in the near future so we can be inside the system. If anybody out there wants to help us with this project, please contact us at uh, beta, B-E-T-A, at gr3d.com and uh, put in the subject bar that you want to talk to Lewis Silverstein about the software project for, connect, uh, for connecting the Vive to Maya. Um, and if you want to actually help us connect the Vive to other programs like Blender or Softimage or 3 Studio Max, we'd also love to talk to you about getting that working because we want to be integrating those project and those pipelines into our virtual production studio here, uh, laboratory at Dronebox Labs. Um, so yeah, that would be great if anybody out there wants to help us with that. So I'm going to bend down here and start plugging in our controllers. So let's just look at these controllers quickly. So we have two controllers. Um, it looks like, looks like there isn't a true left or right. And nothing on them indicates left or right. It looks like on the back of them is a little port for plugging them in. So let's uh, put a little area back here behind our podium to plug these things in so on the ground and they're not in harm's way. Looks like everything has adhered to this USB standard. Oh, that's strange. So the design here, looks like you want to put them on their back to charge them. Also, it sounded like there was an audible type noise that said they were charging. Yeah, they make a little noise. I think, they, I think they're forced feedback too. All right, so we have those charging behind our, our base station. We still have 
25 minutes that has not moved with our, our Vive software download. Uh, here at DroneBox, we do have a internet connection that is constantly streaming our content out to the web. So our download speed is not the fastest. So this is, might take a little bit of time, but we'll see. We're all here together. We're gonna see how long this takes. Um, Cause the average person at home who knows how fast their connection is and what their level of uh, technical awareness is. So we got those two things plugged in. I'm gonna take a leap of faith here and see if I can figure out how this works. So let's see. This is, we got USB three on one side of this thing it looks like. Looks like there's a display port, a micro display or mini display port connector on it. HDMI, power, both, both of them say DC in. You know, I'm not gonna take a leap of faith here and see that I know how to do this thing because there's, it's confusing. I'm not sure which, oh, wait. Oh, there's markings on it. One side says VR, one side says PC. So, that's helpful. There's also, it looks like there's a mounting pad here. You could mount it to your computer. We're not gonna do that at the moment because we are running off the laptop and hopefully we'll be having a dedicated system for this in the near future that will have the latest graphics card in it and getting all that stuff going. If anybody at NVIDIA would like to help us out with that, we'd love to hear from you. So we got our earbuds. Let's. Oh, this makes sense now why there's a, a little audio port on the back of that headset. So you can plug in your earbuds. Cool. It's a fun experience. I've been looking forward to this. Oh man, they got, they got earbuds. They got alternate sizes for different people with different size ears or ear holes or whatever you want to call it. Oh, these, these aren't bad. These look pretty nice. Yeah, these look pretty nice. Everything is nice and branded with HTC. Let's uh, plug these in. Let's just see on our mannequin head here. Sarah's head, how this all works. So left, which side is your left, Sarah? Okay, here we go. So we got, bam, and bam. All right, that's cool. All right, so we got that. We're still downloading. We're about 72% of the way there. That's fine. All right, so we got our power for our base station that we got to plug in. Remember having a VR, I had a slight VR set up over the last 10 years. We've been trying different things. We back, Early 2000s had a, a VFX1 system, which was a virtual reality headset unit that you had to install an ISA board into your computer and then everything plugged in through that. That was it's pretty crazy. It had a CyberPuck, which was the controller unit, which is way ahead of its time. Uh, it had a gyroscope in it and allowed you to control, play video games with the gyroscope unit. Um, then after that, had a uh, uh, Psy visor, which was a standard definition um, video glasses set up. And uh, with that had attached a magnetic tracker uh, called the IsoTrack from Polhemus. And uh, that, was, that was another very primitive 3D virtual reality setup that I've been playing with over the years. Um, then we had access to an Oculus and uh, now we have the HTC Vive, and I'm really curious to see how all this stuff works. I tried this at a convention about two months ago, and after trying it, I knew that it was gonna be the best tool that we could get here at the studio. Um, so I keep saying it's at our laboratory. I mean, this is a studio, but it is a laboratory as well. Um, primarily a laboratory, and uh, we're making web TV, but we're also developing a lot of new technology. And, uh, I knew that if we could get one of these in the, into our laboratory, we could start to do some crazy things. I'm really looking forward to it. So, looks like I got an HDMI cable here. Uh, let's, uh, let's look. Do I have an HDMI port on this laptop? That is a question. I now have a display port. 
But do I have HDMI? Really hope I do. Oh, I do. It's a Dell laptop. It's a, it's a beast. Oh, I broke the illusion of having those podiums. <laughs> All right, so we got this. It's going to plug into the HDMI. And we got our USB to USB. Got to be honest, I have never seen a USB cable that looks like this. It is two USB heads on the USB head on both sides, regular USB. Um, kind of disconcerting, but cool. Once at this side says connect to link box. So I'm going to listen to it and connect it to the link box. And then I'm going to plug it into one of our high speed USB 3 ports done and now we have our power unit which says DCN so connect the link box okay uh, I'm gonna plug it in first and then I'll plug it into our link box oh and they so nicely made it so that all of these DC converters, oh, not quite long enough. Okay, well, let's, let's wrangle our cables here. Let's uh, figure out how to get all of our accoutrement. Oh, something just changed. Gonna run all of our cables down here. And power to that unit. This is quite the elaborate setup. All right, so it's installing now. Oh, it's installing, installing, installing. Oh no, what happened? Oh, it's installing a bunch of things through Windows. Okay. Pardon me for a second, I'm gonna grab a drink. Okay, and just to check my levels. All right, still have audio, great. So I got a drink. Now let's, uh, let's start to see what's happening here. All right, installing everything it looks like. And I guess the last thing to do will be to hook up the headset to the controller box, which, yeah, it doesn't really look like there's a lot of cable here. I might need to get some extenders so we have full range once everything is up and running. Then again, this could be just deceivingly uh, long. It's nice and wound properly. All right, so we're unwinding our cables. It's our umbilical. That's a pretty decent sized umbilical. And uh, just got to remember, it's like any nice cable out there, any cable in particular, any cable actually that you want to be using for a long time. Um, remember to unwind it in a proper fashion and make sure that there are no kinks because these cables uh, are irreplaceable. Well, not irreplaceable, but it's gonna be hard to take that thing apart and put the cables on it. So we have our HDMI, we have a USB, and we have a power. Um, so I'm assuming that the audio is going over the HDMI. Uh, then again, it could be going over USB. Who knows? So I'm going to plug these into our, our link box. You can't see because I'm back here behind the podium. All right. So that's all plugged in. Hey, lights. So we got this little camera on the front. Oh, 
feels so good. Take that little tab off. All right. Let's see. What are we doing over here with the install? Oh, things are still installing. Oh, we got next. All right. Oh. So it looks like <laughs> we had a bunch of instructions here. Move this up a little higher so you can see it. Over here. Yeah, okay. So the base station needs some sort of view. Um, cool. 120 field view. Mount two meters above the floor or higher. Okay. Uh, mount your base station. Shows you can put them on tripod. Turn base station on. Plug in a power adapter. Base station knows. Blah, blah, blah. Cool. Channel indicator. Okay, so check the channels. Find the letter on the face of each base station. Make sure one base station is set to B and the other is C. If you need to change the base station channel, press channel button on the back. So let's see what our base stations say, if anything. This one says C. And I'm going to bet you this one says B. That one says B. All right. So uh, before we do anything further, let's actually put these on high. And up we go. Actually, make sure we go all the way up. Go big or go home, right? All right, so there's our first station up in the air. And I feel like I'm back on a mocap stage. Now, I don't know how people are doing this at home, but this is pretty cool in a stage like this. All right, so we got our two stations up in the air and flying. All right, now what are we doing? Before making sure both, okay, they both got green lights, we checked that. All right, so we got our headset. We jumped the gun, we plugged all these things in. Do we have a little green light on the side of it that tells us it is on? Oh, we do have a green light. We are good. Uh, there's actually a little knob here on the side that is the IPD knob. That's the inner pupillar distance, I believe. That's what that stands for. It's going to be distance of your eyes. So everyone's got different, different shaped head. So that helps you out with the uh, 3D aspect of things. Learn about the link box. Okay. So, like we said, there's power, USB, mini display port, optional, HDMI, and then HDMI, USB, and power. Okay. So, plugging in everything is pretty self-explanatory. There's pretty pictures you can see right over here. We got our controllers. We plugged them in. Really jumped the gun on some of this stuff, but, you know, that's fine. Turning on controllers, you're going to press the button that is the system button on it. All right, so let's see if uh, they're yellow. That means that they're charging. All right. Pardon me. I hope I didn't burp in your ear. Um, so the Vive desktop app is still downloading. Please wait 29%. Wow, I... Thought we had already downloaded that, but I guess not. Okay, uh, I wonder what's in it. Can I see? I'm gonna look inside. Do I take my glasses off? That's the other question. I don't know. We're gonna find out. We're all gonna find out right here, live on dronebox.com. Um, soon we'll be streaming on every platform we can find, uh, but right now we are live on dronebox.com or we are on rerun on youtube.com. Or you can find our entire archive on archive.org. Uh, archive.org is a publicly funded, I believe, uh, service out of San Francisco. 
Uh, they're basically an online library. They host the Gutenberg Project. Uh, they have a lot of videos, um, audio, books. Basically, you can spend your entire life on there and not get through everything that, that they have archived on there. Um, but you also will have over 2,000 hours of DroneBox.com's uh, broadcast from the last year. Um, but before I talk anymore, I'm going to look inside this. I am excited to see what's inside. Uh, take my glasses off. Just be safe. Let's see. All right, Sarah, give me it. I want to see what's in here. All right, so let's see. Oh, and there's a protective film in here. Let's get rid of that. I really feel like I'm not going to be... Oh, it's the desktop, and it's in, not in stereo, and that's kind of nauseating. That's fine. Okay, let's take that. Put that back. Cool. Okay, we'll get there later. Sarah, you can have the headset back for now. Also, if you're on DroneBox.com and you like the content you're watching right now, you can chat with us. Um, there is a chat window over there. Uh, so please log in and uh, make an account and chat with us live on the air. Uh, and if you feel so gracious and you'd like to donate, um, please, there's a donate button, I believe, above me. Uh, so you can click that and donate to DroneBox.com. Um, we will use the money you give us to bring you better content and work on this technology. So, um, let's see, is there anything else left in this box that we, we need? Okay, we got our, our extra face plate. Gonna keep that in here. And we have our sink cable. I'm gonna keep those two things together because it looks like everything else is pretty much accounted for and plugged in. Yeah. Yep. Well, so far it has not been very difficult to get this thing set up. The question is, how hard is it gonna be to get it working once we have all this software downloaded? It is really taking some time. We might have to cut back in non-real time and let you know how long it took to download the software. Well, looks like my mic is still working, that's good. Um, I'll be right back. I'm going to grab another drink. Get some close-ups of this thing. All right. So I'll post these with the video here. So we got the headset here on our, our lovely, lovely assistant, Sarah. And let's uh, take a look at our, our base stations. So here's one base station. It's mounted on our, our tripod here. And then we have our, our second tripod mounted base station. Okay, and uh, Let's just quickly I'll break the illusion here. This is our podium setup. We have our, our controllers charging here. That's our controller unit. And uh, a lovely laptop. Back to our lovely assistant. So I'll post those up after we have everything working. You know, splice those into this video. All right, so we are still waiting for the Vive desktop app to download, which I really thought I had already downloaded. Pardon me. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, we got a user guide we can download. Let's take a look at the user guide while we are downloading the rest of the Vive software. Also, I'm going to plug in another light here so we actually see the head unit. There 
There we go. That's a bit more clear. I'm also be much brighter once I walk over here. Oh yeah. Okay. So that works. So you got our Vive user guide. Let's uh, make this full screenish. Let's see what we got. Contents, unboxing, Vive headset, link box, Vive controller, base station product care. It was play area, Vive experience. Let's see, saying Vive here first time. So we got our setup area. Where does it recommend you put this link box? That's what I want to know. Oh, okay. So now we're just kind of waiting for uh, this stuff to download. 43%. Taking some time, but that's fine. Right now it's... Uh, my time is three o'clock in the morning, local time, Los Angeles. But what is time? Um, anybody out there watching this live, please, please chat at us so I know that somebody out there is watching. Um, if not, don't worry about it. Because uh, I'll see you on the rerun and you can maybe chat at me and try and say hello, but I'm not really live, so it doesn't really matter. Anyway, 44%. Uh, uh, let's see, what do I need to know here? Oh, we got some pretty pictures. Looks like we got a cool hub, which is the home. Instructions on how to use the controller. All right, we'll compare the oh, phone notifications. That's interesting. So it looks like we can pair the Vive with our phone. So, so you know when someone's trying to call you and you're in virtual reality. So we're gonna download that app right now. I think that's gonna be, that's fascinating. That's, a, that's an interesting feature I would have not thought of. So it says, go to your Google Play Store and type in Vive. And let's see what pops up. Vive, okay. Uh, get notifications from your phone while using HTC Vive. It's got a mixed bag of reviews here, but we're going to install it. Man, it wants access to everything. Why not, right? Okay. It's not very big, it's only two megabytes. Well, two and a half. Um, so choosing which notifications, uh, you can set up the different notifications you want. I wonder how this is going to talk to us. It's going to talk via like Bluetooth or. Man, there's a lot of stuff. How long is this manual? It's only 40 pages. That's not bad. Okay. So, did we get it? It's installing. That installed faster than our Vive setup. 48%. Man, I feel like I got dial up. Anybody out there at Time Warner Cable wants to give us a deal on some better fiber. We currently have fiber, um, but we can enjoy some more if you'd like to help us out. All right, getting started. The application on your device is requesting permission to Question is, do I have Bluetooth on this laptop? All right, got to wait for the Vive to work in order to boot that up. Let's see, what else is going on here? 49%, it's chugging along. Um, so now we have 100% installed. At least the app is downloaded. So let's continue. Right, next it will guide us through setting up our system.
Boon the Vive, service done. Okay. Looks like we are connected. Cool. See that up here, it says connected. Who's starting stream VR? Whew, it's exciting. Let's see what happens. No, don't. Well, let's see. We got. Hmm. I wonder if maybe it's inside. That wouldn't make any sense. We'll see. Not really sure what's going on here. Nope, that's just what is on the desktop. Hmm. It's a little start stream VR. It's downloading. Downloading a game. That's not what I want. Hmm, I'm not quite sure what to do here. Let's, let's close some things. Hmm, it's a little confusing. All right, so I restarted the, the Vive program. Now let's see what happens here. Headset not connected. Let's reboot headset, see what happens. You're booting Vive. See that here. Waiting for device. Everything is plugged in. Connected. Green. 
Let's start a DR server, stream VR. Oh, we had a little error there. Troubleshoot it. Make sure you're plugged in properly. For first generation dev kit. No, we don't have a first generation dev kit. Oh, something just happened. So we are trying to install the software here. Oops, okay, so we're installing a Bluetooth driver now. All right, looks like that's installed. All right. It's like things are working, kind of. Let's, uh, let's quit it and see what happens if we come back into it. So it's rebooting the headset. Connecting, connected. We have a little green light. We got a little green light on the side. We're starting stream VR. All right, so it's having an issue with that. Let's try removing the cable. And plugging it back in. We're gonna reboot the headset again, see what happens. Sure, like many other things, technology, there's gonna be a, uh, a learning curve to figure out how your individual hardware setup is gonna work with this particular product. Hmm, did it again. So I'm gonna go into my, my graphics cards controller settings here and see what's going on. I'm going to disable the Vive manually in here and see if that will do it. So let's try this again. And also, I'm going to unplug the USB and plug it into a different port, the same port. See what happens. Let's try this again.
your booting vibe headset. Connecting to Vive, connected. Check stream VR. Still, the headset's display was not found. Please make sure HMI cable are secure. So let's let's see if we can get the controllers to at least start up. They've been charging for the last hour or so. So I'll unplug them from the chargers and hold the app system buttons. All right. Nope, no controllers detected. Let's try this again. Update firmware, you will need to quit all of your current running VR applications. Would you like to continue? Sure. Preparing for firmware update. I said that before I could use them, I had to update my software. So let's, but only for one of them, which is kind of weird. So it says take your, your cable, plug it into the computer. Once it is detected, it will automatically update the firmware. Okay, we're gonna plug in the other controller, the same thing, it's updating the firmware, okay, the base stations are up to date, and other controllers, let's see if we can get our video portion, which is the whole reason for having virtual reality to work. So we have our base stations, but still no headset. We're gonna click our troubleshooter and see what's going on here. Okay, so it's a generic message. Connect to make sure you are in direct mode by right clicking the headset. If there is no check mark next to direct mode, select your mode and enable it. Sorry for being quieter, folks. I'm trying to figure out how this thing is working. I'm trying to enable direct mode, but it's not letting me do it. This might mean I need to update my video driver. So I'm going to go to nvidia.com 
I ignored the update before, which I probably shouldn't have done. So our drivers. Having it scan our system to figure out what driver we need. Let's see. Tear find it somewhere else. All right, so I forgot to download this driver. More waiting. Another 10 minutes here for NVIDIA to download our driver. Let's see what our settings are here. I guess in the meantime, I can try and set up my phone. Hey, it found it. Crazy. Right. All right, it is connected. That's connected at least. How are we doing this download? Seven minutes. Let's 
switch to direct mode. Oh, I can see our space station. This could be a fun space to to enjoy VR, that's for sure. Six minutes. Be lucky if I go to bed before five o'clock today, but it's fun. I'm excited. I'm excited to see what this thing finally looks like, then I can go to bed. Everyone out there, you're watching Dronebox Labs. Uh, this is part of dronebox.com. So we are today unboxing and setting up the HTC Vive, um, which you can see on our lovely assistant here, Sarah. Um, now it has taken over an hour to get the thing downloaded and set up. Um, so I'm, I'm curious how the average consumer is going to be able to to deal with this, but I'm sure where there is a will, there is a way. Um, we now are updating our graphics driver on our workstation laptop here to make it so that we can work with this new device. Um, Everything has been pretty easy to set up. All the hardware is pretty simple to plug in and get at least recognizing on the laptop. Uh, now the part is getting the video feed to properly work so we can start to actually explore our virtual reality. Um, bear with us. Uh, probably going to time lapse some more of this like you just saw with the first half of this when we had to download. We had time lapse going on. Uh, we keep having screen flicker. I'm curious what's going on with that. Well, sit back, relax, and let's see what happens next. About four minutes to go until we are done being downloaded. Again, if anybody is out there that wants to chat with us on dronebox.com, you can chat with us over here on our live chat where you can donate above us. Um, yeah, if you have ideas for shows, please email us at beta at gr3d.com. If you'd like to submit assets for our virtual environment studio, uh, you can email them to us. Actually, first email us at beta at gr3d.com and we can confirm where you can upload those to, and we can feature them on a, a show where we can create a world around them. But we are interested in taking assets that you are creating at home in 3D Studio Max or Maya or Hyptomage or Blender. Uh, we don't discriminate. Um, lightweight folks out there, if you're still out there, you can send us stuff or Cinema 4D. Anybody who can really export anything into an FBX or an OBJ or a 3DS, send them. We'll figure it out and uh, we'll give you credit on the show and we'll include them in our library here on dronebox.com. And uh, yeah, let's, let's start making content together. So we have three more minutes until this driver is done being downloaded. Um, I'm excited. I really want this thing to, to work. I'm curious what it's gonna look like. I'm curious here, I'm gonna see what my range is like before we have anything working. I'm curious how far I can go with this. So, Okay, I can go here. Oh. oh, and the illusion is gone. Okay, so I think once we start working with this, I'm gonna want to move our controller box down. Same with everything else. Oh, here we go, we got our revive lid. Let's put that back. It there makes it vibe now. Two more minutes. So it's gonna be interesting doing virtuality with the umbilical, but I guess everything I've been doing up until now, virtuality has always had an umbilical. Unless you were inside of a cave, cave systems don't have umbilicals. Those are all wireless systems with uh, stereo uh, projections. Minute left, then let's just pray it doesn't break everything on this laptop. 
downloaded the, uh, the driver for the virtual reality experience. Uh, it is the official Quadro Grid driver. Um, it says that it is certified for VR, so we will see what that means. Oh, pardon me again. We did not open up our sync cable. I'll open that up, take a look at it. I'm curious what it is. Oh, it's just a standard stereo cable. Let me probably run that around the rest. All right, 22 seconds and counting. And if anybody's wondering why I keep looking off in that direction, it's because we have a monitor in the studio, so I can see myself over there and I know what's going on around me. Uh, it's a little distracting, but it works. Um, anyway, three seconds, one second, and here we go. All right, here comes the NVIDIA driver. I knew this wasn't going to be the quickest thing to set up, but you never know. Let's see. All right. Checking system compatibility. And I agree. See what we're installing. We are installing now. Let's see if this crashes everything or if it works. If the background behind you, background behind me goes out, that is because the graphics driver has done something, crashed. Uh, it says it's installing graphics driver right now. I'll move that so you can see it. Let's put it over here. There you go. I am very curious to see what this does. Curious to see if it works. Not if, but how. Wondering also if I'm gonna to need to tilt those heads down a little bit more. Cause I keep losing connection to one of them. Let me see. C seems a little maybe far would be the issue with the Bluetooth, but I feel like if we sync them, we'll solve that issue. All right, did we lose our desktop? That was a little piece of things for the green screen. Uh, probably shouldn't have done that, but yeah, whatever. Okay, so installing NVIDIA, installing HD audio driver, which is so strange that there's an audio driver in our video card. But then again, we live in the future, who knows? All right. Installing 3D Vision Driver. Getting close. I also wonder what this setup would be like on a fresh computer. Brand new. All right, updating core, whatever that means. All right, we are updated. Let us Try and reboot our VR setup. Oh, and we have a green. We are connected and tracking. Cool.
need to launch compositor. I don't know what that is. So we're going to launch the room setup. Oh, game crashed. The port folder name. Well, we're getting closer. Man, it crashed again. I'm going to disable my my screen share to see if that has anything to do with it. That did something. All right, so I'm going to reboot that the five program. The VR room setup is not happy. I try it via the Vive Home and see if that does anything different. No. Well, we're slowly getting there. Oh, I did something. I disabled the direct connect mode. Uh, don't know what that did, but. I'm gonna reboot the Vive headset and see if that, what that does. <sighs> this is challenging, but fun.
I pissed it off again. I think what might be most helpful here is a actual system reboot. So I'm gonna give ourselves a restart and see what happens. So bear with me while we reboot the system. Right back. All right, so we are restarting now. Uh, somebody talking there, I didn't realize my mic was off, but it's back on. Um, like I said, this is a much longer video than I initially intended. I thought this would be a much shorter process, but unlike, I mean, just like all new things with technology, things take a little longer than expected to get started. So, have no fear, we will get through this. Well, my desktop is doing something, that's for sure. I wonder if I can see it through. Do I have what's on here? Let's see. Nope, it's red, so. Oh, nice strappage going on. All right. Let's see. Oh, pardon me. It's four o'clock in the morning here. I expected to be done with this a little bit earlier. Didn't start until late, but uh, let's see what's going on. Let's see what happens. Once I get the Vive program booted back up, I will share my screen again. See this time if it's what's going on. Oh. 
Looks like our computer is a little upset with us right now. I think it realizes that the uh, monitor is not long for this world as might be replaced by that virtual headset pretty soon. This might be when the machines start to rebel. Well, there are some HTC things running on our computer, as well as Steam. Don't know what they are, but they are running. All right, well, Steam is trying to download something. Try to download our our the gallery episode one, but I want just want the the Vive program to work so we can calibrate it and get it working. All right, so I'm booting back up now. I get my virtual screen sharing again. Again, that might be the issue as well. So I'm gonna leave. I'll turn it back on. All right, we're getting close, maybe. All right, let's see. VR status. Starting, connecting, not ready. Make sure power is connected properly. Power is on. Unplug it. Plug it back in. All of our connections are solid. Let's reboot it. Hmm. Connected. I feel like I've said that quite a few times tonight. So let's try and do this again with the direct mode. Enable the video.
Come on, headset. Let's see. I can go. I see a picture. Of a desktop. Don't think that's what I need. Construction of this thing is really nice. Okay. You need to be full screen for stream VR to work correctly. Oh, we got something. Something different going on here. Not sure what it is, but something. I'm not sure what's going on exactly. Okay. All right, so let's get our head. Bring our friend Sarah out here. Let's set her up. That's asked me a trigger. So stand in the middle of your clear space, point your controller at the middle of your monitor and trigger the index finger. Information will come back. Okay. Locate the floor. Place both controllers on the floor, visible base station. Okay. I think that should work. Nice your space. Okay, trace your space. Hold the trigger as you trace the outer perimeter of your available space. Two floor ceiling. Okay, 
Hold the trigger as you trace the outer perimeter of your available space with the tip of the controller. Okay. Cool. Okay, so that worked. So now. All right, Sarah, my turn. Let's see, let's bring this out of the way. Let's see, test the audio. Okay. No, nope, still in a picture. Getting closer, that's for sure.
Now we're seeing what happens with what with tilt brush. Nope. Still no image. All right, let's try it again. Let's close it. Turn the VR back on. Screen flashed. Oh, I got something now. The blue screen. Oh, we got something. Okay, we're in business now. All right. All right, there's a base station. We got controllers. All right, this is pretty cool. Not sure what I'm doing now, but I see this is real. Huh? That's cool. This cage. Got a cool cage. All right. Joy. All right. So this this is it's pretty cool. All right. Now I need to get a program working. I'm actually going to go in the other room and see if I can broadcast. What's on the screen? Well, you know what? We're going to show that later. But we got it working, and uh, that's all that matters. So thank you for bearing with us through all of this. Um, I'm Louis Silverstein from DroneBox.com. This is DroneBox Labs, and uh, later this week, we're going to be exploring some virtual reality here live on the broadcast. So tune back in and have a nice night. Welcome to the drone.